Disclaimer, this video is simply based on my personal opinions on the outward physical touch and feel of the comparison between the Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers. It does not go into depth on detailed stats such as the weight or the extended battery life or the more detailed precision of the wireless technology. It only touches on the feel and outward cosmetic look of the controllers. Thank you for watching. All right, so let's start off the video with a comparison between the Xbox One controller and the Xbox 360 controller. Now, both of these are the wireless versions. Um, one of the things you'll notice straight off the bat is, of course, um, this little um, shotgun panel, as some used to call it, where you slide the batteries into and sort of uh, click it in, almost like you're reloading a shotgun, kind of. That is completely missing on the Xbox One controller. It's very smooth. I kind of liked that uh, the feel of changing the batteries but I think overall the smoothness aspect of this is really really good um, it just sort of pops out like this and it's just a panel um, I think this is more easily more easy to get lost or broken because it's so thin but um, overall the batteries do slide in very very smoothly and it is um, you know it works out pretty well now moving on to parts that are more along your lines I think the number the two things, or three things should I say, that are the main differences between these controllers in feel um, is the fact that this one definitely feels smaller in your hand, specifically around this area. Um, this one feels more uh, grippy, like you have it in your hand. This one definitely feels smaller. Something feels lacking right here that makes the controller feel smaller. It's almost the same size, but even you can tell with the control sticks, um, I got like this one I'm holding closer to the camera. The control sticks are definitely smaller on the Xbox One controller. They definitely are. And something I wanted to just point out generally, something that I'm noticing in the general comparison before we move on, is that this controller seems to more favor a younger audience um, than this controller did. Similar to how the original Xbox controller um, was way too big for really, really young hands. It was just a gigantic brick, sort of. They're making them smaller as they go along. And um, this is definitely, I think, an improvement, but it's interesting in several aspects, as I'll get to show you. For example, the um, control stick is more easily pressed in any direction. Um, yes, it's more sensitive and overall more versatile, but it is more easily pressed in a direction. This, I feel like when I first got the controller, it was harder. Yeah, yeah, definitely a more grippy aspect to it. So when you go to the Xbox One controller, don't expect to be playing games on really, really high sensitivities because this is super easy to press in any direction already. So playing on the high sensitivity is not advisable. Now you'll see the day one 2013. That's because I have got the day one edition. Um, you know, whoopity fracking do. I get a little, I get a little, it's not even engraved. It's just sort of on the controller. You know, really no big deal whatsoever. The next main difference is the D-pad. The D-pad on the Xbox 360 controller can obviously be pressed in all eight directions. Up and down, left and right, and diagonally as well. Well, this can only be pressed up and down, left and right, but you'll notice that it has a click to it. So you can actually feel when the controller is clicking. Obviously on the Xbox 360, you can't really tell. And it was extremely frustrating. Multiple games I played with the Xbox 360 controller where the D-pad would require me to press in a diagonal direction and it would register as an up or down. This does not happen at all on this controller. This is a much better D-pad. In fact, I would recommend using this for the menus to save wear and tear on your control stick. I do that all the time. I use this for the menus and not this. Moving on to the sort of the uh, back of the controller here. I'll try to get these both in, in view here. Um, the triggers obviously in the Xbox One are much, much bigger. And again, I think this is to facilitate a more younger generation of gamers. Um, you'll see that a lot of the other things are generally the same. You have this, the, the you know, USB sort of charge cable that can plug into the front of the Xbox. You have the sync button, very, very, very similar on both. But um, the bumpers are also huge. Um, and something I wanted just to point out to, to uh, viewers who are, are watching this 
is that when you're holding the Xbox One controller, it is harder to reach up and press the bumpers for whatever reason. I, it would definitely took some getting used to. Um, this is just so much easier because they're right above you. Like literally this part of my finger is on the bumper. That's what I press the bumper with. So it's just like, boom, you know, super easy. This, because the button is so, I guess, big or something, and it sort of curvatures off like this, you, you have to click the button. It, it doesn't look very um, understandable on camera, but when you hold the controller, trust me, that's gonna be the way it feels. It takes some getting used to. Another thing that I really noticed about the triggers was that these have much more kickback to them. What I mean by that, in the triggers of the Xbox 360 controller, it's much harder to press them. These literally go down super easy. Like there's no, there's almost no sound to it. Pressing it down here is as easy as pressing it down here. And it all lets up with the same tension. It's, it's just a very, very smooth experience. And this can be very, very um, confusing to players who are first playing the game because it's like, okay, so I'm holding that controller this much. I'm holding that controller this much. How, how much do I need to hold it down? And for shooter games especially, I really like this trigger better because it gives you some tension, feeling like you're pressing against the resisting force as you're pulling the trigger on your weapon. However, the controller mostly makes up for this with the rumble that it, that is acquired in the triggers. And this was a very unique experience, which of course I'll be turning off when I, uh, when I actually find the option to turn off the rumble because I wasn't able to find the option in the menus. I'm sure it's there somewhere or will be put into the menus eventually. But... Um, I'll eventually turn the rumble off because playing with rumble in first person shooter games obviously is not something you want to do on if you're playing online multiplayer because it just messes up your aiming. But for single player experiences, it was very interesting firing different weapons with this controller. Very well done as far as the rumble and feel of the experience. Um, really puts you into the game. The triggers rumble as well as the rumble motors in here. The Xbox 360 only has rumble motors um, sort of down here. Um, the buttons are very, very similar, um, except they're not as much raised. This one has a little bit more raised buttons than this. These are more a little closer to the controller, just like the D-pad, really. I didn't notice anything bad about that. Uh, a confusing thing, and I just, I don't know if this is just me, but I don't know why you'd put the home button here. Um, you have to reach all the way up to press it instead of just going that. Instead of just going that, you have to completely shift your hand along the controller and press the home button. I don't know why that is the case. I I didn't really like that. Um, I think it was to avoid accidental pressing of the home button, but even so, um, this is a raised home button. So having the home button not raised at all um, should make it not very easy to press accidentally. And, um, you know, I feel like other issues like panic scoping, accidentally clicking the stick even though you don't mean to why because you're gripping your controller so hard those are much more prominent problems um, than accidentally pressing the home button so why you'd move it from the center to the top is a little beyond me the last thing i wanted to sort of show you was the port um, this is a uh, sort of audio jack that you could use um, for example here's my astro a40 uh, thing that i just sort of plug into it here boom so it pops in really easy and it's really you know non-obtrusive cord but I do really love how the chat puck for the Xbox One is designed. Now, I think these little plastic things are going to break off for a lot of people really, really fast. Um, I don't know why they put those in, to be honest. They need to be more secure. But I really like how, um, how it's designed. Now, if you'll notice, it's actually a uh, sort of USB or special made port that Microsoft has made. Adapters will be coming out for this eventually. Now, it's cool because the adapters... I've seen adapters that actually look like this, um, just with the cord taken away and a little, you know, a port, a port like this uh, right here on the chat puck that you can sort of buy. And that will, um, it's really kind of interesting. Um, so you just sort of click it in here. And um, if I can just get it in real fast, it takes a little bit. Um, this was a little puzzling to me how it was just a little tricky to get this in here. Um, even though I have them directly on the guidelines, uh, the, yeah, there you go, there you go. So now, there you go. And it's really a, just an extension of the controller, and I like how this works. You can just alter the volume right here. I don't have to take my hand off the controller, reach up to a little, 
chat icon thing, it can just be boom, right here. I can mute myself, I can click this, do that. It's really nice. Um, I like how that is designed. Um, really slick and smooth. I wish the, the cord was not as easily tangled, of course, for the, and of course this goes to the um, headset, which is a lot better than the Xbox 360 one that it came with originally. But um, that's how that looks. And hopefully there will be adapters for it, for this, so that I can use my chat cord eventually. Having said that, the Kinect is very, very, uh, very competent with the, um, oh, sorry, very competent with voice uh, recognition. As long as you don't have a lot of background noises, you don't really need to use uh, the chat um, microphone thing that it comes with the Xbox 360. Just use your Kinect, especially if you're in a room alone. The last thing I really want to mention about the control sticks is that on the top of the control stick, if you can see that right here, it's very, very machined down but there's this ridge. There's this actual, and you can actually see some dirt there. You see that little dirt because someone's been pushing up on the controller so much and it rubs off uh, debris from your hand around this edge. I don't know why that is the case. I don't think these will be as easily worn down, but I think that someone is gonna make a killing making controller um, nubs that fit on top of these that make them more um, universally smooth like the like these were or how they once you wear down these little nubs how these eventually become I think someone's gonna make a killing on that because um, it, it could easily snap on and definitely provide more of a experience what's strange about this material the very very top material not the sides the sides is really grippy really good the sides material and I like how there's an edge here so that your finger doesn't completely go off but when you're resting your finger in the dead center of the controller, sweat can sort of build up and you can slip slightly to the side. With this, since the controller, the top of the controller was all made with the same material, it's much, much less easy to do that. Now, I think the main thing that is just strange is that the top of the control stick is made with two different materials. That will just take some getting used to. It's not a detriment to the controller at all. It just really does take some getting used to along with the very, very increased sensitivity because it's so easy to press the control sticks. Just boom, boom, boom. It's so easy to press them in all directions. So guys, that's it for this video. If you could like or subscribe, that would be great. I'm gonna have more Xbox One content up in the future. And if you guys want me to answer any specific questions about the Xbox One in general, while I will be making videos already in the future that are based on specific topics, feel free to suggest a topic below or ask a very specific question, and I'll answer that in a video in the future. Thanks, guys. Peace.